Well, the other update we've been watching out of Washington, D.C. was a very interesting uh, piece of sound that we got from an immunologist, Dr. Rick Bright, who is ousted from his job uh, after warning the Trump administration to prepare for the pandemic. He spoke in front of the House Energy and Commerce Committee uh, just a few hours ago. And interestingly, Dr. Bright warned that a resurgence in cases uh, as states continue to reopen their economies could present some very, very serious issues moving into 2020's winter. He said that 2020 will be the darkest winter in modern history. Here's what he had to say. If we fail to improve our response now based on science, I fear the pandemic will get worse and be prolonged. There will be likely a resurgence of COVID-19 this fall. It will be greatly compounded by the challenges of seasonal influenza. Without better planning, 2020 could be the darkest winter in modern history. All right, so let's chat a little bit more about this, because obviously we've been talking about how the president's timeline differs from what some in the, in the science community has been projecting here. Uh, so we're going to bring on Yap Venema. He is uh, executive vice president, chief science officer at United States Pharmacopeia. That's a nonprofit dedicated to helping improve global health through standards and compounding pharmaceutical manufacturing and other fields. Uh, and Mr. Venema, I mean, the interesting thing here to me is that there aren't assumptions that basically everybody out there is going to be jumping at the idea of actually going out and getting a vaccine here once we get it. So how are you kind of projecting uh, how many Americans are going to be uh, accepting this vaccine and how long that might actually take before you do think about being completely safe to fully reopen? Thank you, Zach. Um, first of all, let me express the hope that uh, every American uh, will be able, will be willing to take the vaccine once it's available because vaccines are truly um, a miracle invention when it comes to medical science and, and protect many, many lives. So that's something that I'd certainly like to mention. Um, when it comes to the timeline, um, as you know, many components go into the preparation, development and manufacturing of a good and healthy and safe vaccines. Um, so it will take some time uh, to develop that vaccine. And my expectation is that that will be available along a timeline of 12 to 18 months. Uh, of course, scientists, companies, um, regulatory agencies around the world are working very hard to do this as fast as possible. Um, and we have to do this in a way that still is based in science and facts and evidence uh, to make sure that we uh, administer those vaccines to, uh, to healthy people. Yeah, and I mean, you talk about uh, the importance of making sure that it's safe. I, I guess it becomes another question whether or not people think that it will be, especially if you're if you're listening to the president talking about expediting the timeline to get that vaccine out. Interestingly, a study by The Conversation pointed out that about 23% of Americans right now might refuse a COVID-19 vaccine. That's not necessarily people who classify themselves as anti-vaxxers, then the percentage jumps quite a bit. But you're talking about maybe a quarter of Americans out there not necessarily saying that they would be quick to take up a vaccine here. So, I mean, does that number surprise you? What's your take on, on maybe the reluctance and why people might be a little bit reluctant? Uh, the number does surprise me. It, it, it is high. I was, I was aware and I am aware of the, the reluctance against vaccines. The number is certainly higher than I would have expected. Um, I think it has to do with the uncertain times that we work, uh, that we live in. Uh, we're all dealing uh, with our own uncertainties. What does the virus do? Where is it? How long will this take? Uh, and as we've just heard, uh, what happens to my job and my safety, et cetera. So in these uncertain times, I can certainly understand uh, that response. And that's why it's so important to keep communicating to the general public uh, how these vaccines are going to be prepared, what diligence and what uh, science, in fact, goes into that to make sure that we uh, convince the general public to take them uh, and to prepare them in a safe way. Yeah, it was it was a surprisingly high number for me as well. But I mean, when you look into why that might be, I mean, vaccines aren't necessarily new, right? As you were talking about, no. they've been around and they've been proven safe in terms of uh, how we've battled certain things. You can look at mumps and measles. Um, in terms of those numbers, and I guess, you know, the historical precedent here to kind of make sure that those are mandatory, can't go to school unless you have certain vaccines, uh, immunizations, uh, what's your take on how that necessarily compares to COVID-19 and why it's so important beyond some of those things to make sure that you do and how you might actually enforce making sure people get these vaccines? Yeah, that's a very, very important question you're asking. What you're really asking are, are health policy questions. And, and 
Uh, I'm a scientist. I'm an academic scientist rooted in, in what it takes to do that. So these are very difficult questions. The best we can do is to continue to base those decisions in the science and the evidence that is available at the time. I think the big difference with uh, the, men the example you mentioned on measles and mumps is that we're dealing with a new virus, a new, a new thing that we are learning new things about every day. And we have to cope uh, with that situation and make the best possible decisions based on what we now uh, now today. So it's very hard to predict um, uh, right now how all of that will play out in the coming months. Um, lastly, when you're talking about the timeline, we, we talked, we opened with kind of the divergence in terms of President Trump's timeline saying that he hopes to get a vaccine out there uh, by the end of this year. We've heard from Dr. Fauci saying that it might be 12 to 18 months uh, more likely on the timeline. What's been your um, estimation of how quickly this could move forward in getting something that is safe and proven effective and, and I guess how long it would then take to get it distributed to not just Americans, but around the globe. Right now we are, uh, we are working with a timeline of approximately 12 to 18 months. Um, we are working with uh, local companies here in Maryland where we are based uh, as well as around the world. There are currently over a hundred vaccine trials uh, going on. Not all of them will be successful. We know that from experience. Um, and we have been working with the Maryland Tech Council and the life sciences to to really help understand what it takes to do that expeditiously um, and in a good manner. So what we are providing are services to expedite um, um, the development and the manufacturing. We have been around as USP for 200 years. Uh, we have services to offer when it comes to ensuring quality drugs and vaccines. Uh, and we're doing everything possible to expedite those timelines. Right now we are uh, thinking uh, in the same terms of 12 to 18 months to uh, to get that vaccine available, manufactured in the number of doses that will be required to protect the U.S. population as well as the world. All right, there you go. The latest on the vaccine from, from Yap Venema, U.S. Pharmacopoeia, Executive Vice President and Chief Science Officer. Uh, appreciate you taking the time, Mr. Venema. Good luck. Thank you.